getting special permission to enter private property. Eric Eulis wants to dig deeper into a spot. He's sure he'll find something. This is a real, you know, real mystery. There was a, a real D.B. Cooper. This isn't a figment of someone's imagination. And, uh, you know, the stuff that he left with, left the plane with, the, the money, the attache case that ostensibly carried the bomb and the parachutes that he jumped with, uh, they've, been, they've never been found. The area he's searching is the same spot where a stash of money was found in 1980 by a child. Eric thinks the FBI missed a step and didn't search up the bank high enough. My goodness. He's removing rocks, dirt, and other debris before digging deeper, going about 18 inches down. All this debris placed upon here, effectively what we have is a time capsule. So if the stuff was down there, a foot or a foot and a half down, it's still there today. Let's step away for a moment and give a little history lesson and show some of our video from the KGW archives. It was November of 1971. A man named Dan, AKA DB Cooper, hijacked an airplane after it took off from Portland. He handed a crew member a note that said he had a bomb in his briefcase. The pilot landed in Seattle. The passengers, well, they were exchanged for four parachutes and $200,000. And after the flight took off again, the FBI says Cooper jumped out somewhere between Seattle and Reno. And his fate is still one of the FBI's biggest unsolved mysteries. I've always felt like he buried the money, the attache case, and the parachutes all at the same time, all in this area here, because back then, of course, 1971, this was just sand. This is really... Hewlett says whatever he finds, he'll turn over to the FBI. That's if it's even located here. Honestly, if it's not here, I have no explanation for where the items could be. Along the Columbia River, Devin Haskins, KGW News.